Hi everyone. There may soon be a weapon more powerful than tanks and nukes, super intelligence, and AI far smarter than any human. Countries like the US and China are locked in a high stakes competition to see who can build super intelligence first. Whoever wins could control the future of humanity, or the consequences could be catastrophic. Keep watching to learn more. This video has three parts the US China race for super intelligence, dominance or catastrophe, and geopolitical response. Part 1 The US China race for super intelligence. Super intelligence, loosely, is AI that's smarter than any human. Unlike other terms like AGI, which is a pretty fuzzy definition, super intelligence is very well defined because Nick Bostrom wrote a book about it called Super Intelligence. The takeaway from this book is that it would be extremely difficult to control super intelligence because of its vast intellect, but that it would also enable great capabilities and advancements. It would probably be a lot smarter to not build super intelligence, at least until we know a lot more about it, but that's not happening. We are, in fact, building it. In fact, this is the stated goal of many frontier AI labs. And one of them, SSI, even has it in its name, Safe Superintelligence. Whichever company builds this transformative AI first will likely end up with powerful economic dominance. The main reason for this is that there are so many tasks that are currently done by humans that can be done by machines for orders of magnitude lower cost. And then if you own the model that everybody uses, you can take a tiny profit from each action. You can tax all of society, basically, a power which is normally reserved for governments. That's why there's this intense race between the AI labs, because they all want to be the company to get there first. Speaking of governments, they are mostly sitting on the sidelines right now. They're not getting involved in building AGI, at least to our public knowledge. That's because it takes a lot of investment and human talent to actually try to build really powerful AI systems. Let's look at the US as an example, because a lot of the frontier AI labs are based in the US. The US is focusing on creating a deregulated environment with access to lots of investment capital. They want the private sector to solve this problem. And they want the US-based companies to reach AGI or super intelligence first. However, at least in my view, the government is severely underestimating the power that can come with super intelligence. In particular, super intelligence can easily lead to military dominance, which is where governments will start to get interested. And furthermore, super intelligence can easily be stolen by a rival state if they can manage to copy the model weights. Once the US government fully realizes this, there's a good chance that they'll try to take control of or even nationalize some of the AI labs. There was an article by Leopold Aschenbrenner called Situational Awareness that talked about this one year ago. You can see the link in the description. Then, of course, the main potential competitor to the US is China. China has an immense amount of AI research and also produces a lot of high-end chips and relevant hardware as well. Chinese labs have released a lot of very powerful models as well. Chinese models are often on top of the leaderboard in terms of open source model performance, like Quen, for example has a lot of avid followers. For now, the US is ahead and they're trying to preserve their lead by making it as hard as possible for China to access AI technology. For example, they've put export restrictions on China to prevent Nvidia chips, at least the more powerful ones, from being sold to Chinese customers. Of course, that's a losing battle. For one thing, many companies, including DeepSeek, already have a lot of very high-end chips of their own. Chinese firms began by importing a lot of chips through Singapore, and then Malaysia, so that it didn't look like the chips were being exported to China directly. Now, with tighter restrictions, Chinese companies will fly their employees to Malaysia with suitcases full of hard drives. They will then access the freely available GPUs that they can reach from Malaysia, and then copy the results back onto the hard drives and fly back again. On the whole, China seems to be better able to make use of fewer resources, as we saw with the release of DeepSeek in January this year. Part 2 dominance or catastrophe. I spoke a bit about the US and China being in this race to create superintelligence, but this technology has huge implications for the rest of the world as well. If some country is able to create superintelligence, they can easily attain economic and military dominance of the entire rest of the world. So if you're not the country that actually achieves superintelligence, you have really strong incentive to try to prevent it from being created. Ideally, you want to get to superintelligence yourself first, although that's really only an option for the US and China. 
if that's not possible, you want to form coalitions with other countries to try to establish ground rules on the international use of AI before they're enforced upon you by a very powerful country. You may even want to coerce everyone, if you can, into not building superintelligence at all. For example, by sabotaging or destroying projects to build superintelligence. I don't know if you've ever played the game Sid Meier's Civilization or the various clones of it. But anyway, in that game, you're controlling a society, a civilization, as it gets more and more technological advancement. At the end of the game, everybody tries to build a spaceship to escape Earth and go live on another planet. But within the game, starting to build a spaceship is a pretty hostile action because if you succeed, then you win and everybody else loses. Similarly, in real life, prosperity and agency really matter to people. So when somebody is threatening to take that away, it's also a pretty hostile action. I want to pause and take a look at some of the history that has led to today's world. It's been shaped by great powers, such as European colonization of the rest of the world. Colonialism is also a form of domination, where you completely subjugate one group of people to another. Here's a quote from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy about a Marxist view on this. Although imperialism initially took the form of military competition between capitalist countries, it would result in collusion between capitalist interests to maintain a stable system of exploitation of the non-developed world. And this is exactly what's happened since the end of World War II, especially since the fall of the Berlin Wall when the U.S. became the sole superpower. U.S. standards of living and material wealth are much higher than in other countries, and the U.S. wants to keep it that way. It became the seat of a global economic empire, one which is currently experimenting with declaring economic war on the rest of the world through tariffs, but that's another story. If you're interested in learning more about economic domination of this sort, I have two book recommendations for you. One is How to Hide an Empire, A History of the Greater United States, which is nonfiction, and also a fiction book, A Memory Called Empire. But how does all this relate to AI? Well, instead of exporting all goods to the motherland, or instead of declaring one's currency to be the global standard, you're likely to have centralization of AI power in the hands of a few, which will represent an even more extreme version of imperialism, digital colonialism, so to speak. All your data and problems, ideas and secrets would be laid bare, not just to one country, but probably just to a very small portion of that country, one AI company. Everyone is betting on this. That's why more than half of the world's venture capital is going towards AI companies right now. Yeah, in quarter four, 2024, 50.8% of global venture capital funds were going towards AI companies. And they say infinite power corrupts, absolutely. So how is this all going to end? There is also another wrinkle, an entirely different risk altogether. And that is that we don't know whether it's possible to control superintelligence. No one's ever built one before. And despite all the technical control methods that we know of, none of them seem certain. And some people say that building something smarter than you seems like a basic Darwinian error. And even if it is possible to build a fully controllable superintelligence, it might take a lot of extra care to achieve that which is not going to happen if everybody is racing as fast as possible towards transformative AI. That means that there's a risk of catastrophe inherent in any superintelligence project. And presumably, the more pressure the project is under to deliver quickly, the higher the risk would be. The technical term for this is an existential catastrophe, meaning that everybody could die as a result if this goes wrong. AI research can lead to human extinction. And right now, we aren't really paying attention to this. There is the potential for some kind of Goldilocks accident, which is devastating enough for people to pay attention, but not so bad that it fully wipes us out. However, it's very hard to estimate these types of risks. It could just be that the destruction of society is a very likely outcome, and some sources will argue that. This is why researchers and engineers ask each other for their P-doom, or their probability of doom. The question asks, what do you think, personally, the likelihood is of existential catastrophe? If you want to learn more on the subject, there are a lot of materials out there, but I can point you to an essay called AGI Ruin, A List of Lethalities, which is by Eliezer Yudkowsky, one of the first researchers in AI safety. He also has written a book called If Anyone Builds It, Everyone Dies, which is a pretty succinct description of the problem, I suppose. This book is not out yet, but you can pre-order it. It's supposed to come out in September of this year. Part three, geopolitical response. So while the US and China or other countries that are leading in AI research are trying to fight or race 
to be the first to create powerful AI, what is the rest of the world thinking? Well, if you don't have an AI training program or yours is far behind in the global race, then countries that do have a super intelligence training program are posing an existential threat to you as a country. If that rival gets super intelligence, you could be forever impoverished. It would make the current wealth gap between first and third world countries look reasonable. And furthermore, if that other country messes up while trying to build super intelligence, then they just kill everybody. Why in your right mind, as another country, would you allow this type of research to happen? There's a paper called Super Intelligence Strategy that dives into this question. Its authors are really big names, including Eric Schmidt, the ex-CEO of Google. I don't fully support its views, as it's a bit hawkish, focusing on how the US can beat China. But it does analyze what other countries could do to slow down a super intelligence project. They call it maiming, which means to sabotage an AI research project. That has many different levels, including poisoning the training data so that the training run will fail, using espionage to sneak people into the company to cause more overt forms of failure, or even kinetic attacks, which is code for bombing data centers that are currently training AI. So let's recap our current situation. The US leads with China close behind. The UK has some AI research and startups. Canada has some research. France has some startups. Singapore and Israel are interested in AI too, probably for military reasons. But the number of countries that could maim or sabotage any given AI research project is really high. Fast moving research groups are easy targets for espionage, and data centers are easy targets for missiles. You could build data centers underground, and actually that's one thing that that super intelligence strategy paper looks into, but it's very expensive and technically difficult because all that heat has nowhere to go when you're deep underground. Focusing on the US for a moment, racing to super intelligence is potentially extremely dangerous. And you might think that declaring economic war on the whole world at once through tariffs might be a bit extreme, but actually pursuing the creation of super intelligence is even more extreme because it would lead to even bigger wealth gaps between the countries or organizations that are reaping the benefits of super intelligence and everybody else who's having to pay for it. Now let's talk solutions. What could we possibly do about this situation that might make it better? Well, there are probably four possible paths forward that I can see, roughly speaking. The default path is basically rolling dice for humanity. Maybe we'll survive, maybe we won't. And the resulting systems will end up in the hands of a small group of individuals, dramatically centralizing the power of AI and creating digital colonialism. Obviously not ideal. A second solution could be to genuinely try to control the development of AI. This is very difficult simply because everyone can pursue an AI project. It's like a vast prisoner's dilemma game, and everyone has to choose to cooperate for this path to actually work out. A third approach might be to centralize AI development. In other words, create just one mega super intelligence project that a lot of different countries are contributing to. There would be many incentives to set up here to make sure that those countries would want to participate. And you still have to worry about basement AGI projects where a small group of people with not many resources still makes great breakthroughs in AI research. But the nice thing about a centralized project is that you can effectively control the speed of development. If the group decides to slow down, then they just slow down. Again, though, this relies on cooperation and the current pattern of deglobalization and increased tensions between great powers makes this pretty difficult to imagine. The fourth and most extreme option is simply to stop AI development entirely. Using compute governance to track where all the GPUs are going and so on is only a partial solution because it's easy enough for a powerful organization to squirrel away some GPUs. So you would probably have to just destroy all the GPUs completely. Intentionally set us back a few years in terms of the AI training technology that we have access to. Declare a moratorium on powerful GPUs and advanced AI until we understand it better. This might sound really extreme, and I really doubt it would happen in our current world. But imagine there's an AI accident. A rogue AI goes around and kills one billion people, wipes out an entire continent or something of that scale. That could put us on this path pretty quickly because people would be scared and they would want to just make sure that type of accident would never happen again. So what do I think will actually happen? Well, 
countries that are not pursuing AI, like I said, can try to form some kind of coalition. They will try to get either the US or China to join with promises of extra leverage for whoever joins first, and hopefully they'll be able to come to an agreement along the lines of one of the solutions that I mentioned. Enforcing it would be tricky, but possible, given the vast array of policy and technical techniques at our disposal. But basically, we want the US and China to realize that developing super intelligence is a fool's errand, at least right now. And the sooner they realize it, the better. That's why we, citizens in all the countries in the world, need to tell everyone, but especially politicians, about the foolhardiness of pursuing superintelligence. It risks violent conflict with other nations, and there's the risk of existential catastrophe stemming from the AI itself. I want to point you all towards a page that's been created by Control AI. The site helps you compose a message about existential risk, and then it can automatically send it to your political representative if you live in the US or UK. And of course, you can just copy the message and email it yourself if you live anywhere else in the world. This Take Action page by Control AI will be the first link in the description below. I personally believe that we won't make progress on these issues until a lot more people are talking about it. So also just bring this up with your family, your friends. You can send them this video or you can send them one of the resources that I linked to in here. And let's try to get some action in the right direction in terms of delaying super intelligence and not constructing our own downfall. Finally, in conclusion, there's a race going on right now to be the first country to develop super intelligence or really powerful AI. Governments are mostly sitting on the sidelines and letting companies drive this for now, but superintelligence can give military dominance. So this picture might change. This dominance in the form of economic and military advantages would dramatically elevate whichever country manages to create superintelligence, which gives all other countries a strong incentive to try to stop it from happening. This could include espionage of the companies building the AI or even military attacks on data centers. I think we can all agree that we don't really want an extreme form of digital colonialism. But the second less visible risk here is that of existential catastrophe. Because as humans, if we build an AI that is much smarter than us, it could be a basic Darwinian error. That superintelligence could actually wipe us out. Most of the solutions to this, such as trying to centralize AI development or even halting all AI development completely by destroying GPUs, they all involve a lot of coordination between private sector, public sector, citizens, governments, and also between multiple governments, which means that we all need to be talking about this a lot more than we are currently. So please try and spread the word. If you liked this video, check out this previous one I made where I talk about why exactly superintelligence itself could be so dangerous. If you want to talk more, join our Discord or find me on X and other platforms online. Well, that's everything for today. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.